Good evening, everybody. We'd like to extend a warm welcome to everyone that has been able to join us for this meeting. But before we start, we're going to ask God's blessing with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father and our merciful God, we give thee thanks for thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank thee that there is every day when thou sent him into this world to bear in his body our sins upon a tree, to make him, Father, the one that would be capable of making it possible for us to have our sins forgiven. We thank you that he is the theme of our message tonight. And we are going to, with thy help, tell people about salvation and how they can know their sins forgiven. Our Father, each and every one that is looking on, we pray that thou would give, uh, would bless them. And we pray that the message that is spoken would exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This we ask in his precious name, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you have a Bible with you, can you turn to the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 27, sorry, chapter 28, the Gospel of Matthew and chapter 28. I just want to read two passages of scripture today before giving my message. Matthew 28 and reading from verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. The second reading is from the epistle to 1 Timothy and chapter 2. The epistle to 1 Timothy and chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, sorry, the, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. And just once again, I'll read that. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Now we trust that God will add a blessing to the reading of his word. If this is your first time attending a gospel meeting, we welcome you. These meetings uh, had on a weekly basis, usually we do it in inside of a building and because of the COVID situation we are taking advantage of the technology that's at our fingertips and we are able to get the message out again if this is the first time you're attending one of these meetings you may be wondering what's it all about why are we preaching what we call the gospel What's the purpose of this? Well, I can I can let you know for, from the start, <laughs> this is not because we are losing uh, our congregation or numbers are dropping or anything like that. We read in Matthew chapter 27, a mandate that was given by Jesus Christ, instructions to a few of his own before he went back to heaven. He was able to tell them that his father, God in heaven, 
had given him all power in heaven and in earth. And that we were to go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and to teach them all things, teach them to observe all things whatsoever he had commanded us. He has promised never to leave us nor to forsake us. And this is the mandate that he's given us. And we take advantage on a Sunday evening to preach the gospel, to tell men and women and boys and girls how they can be sure that they can be in heaven when they leave this earth, when, when they come to the end of life. This situation that exists right now with the COVID virus is one that has caused many people to wonder about their latter end. It's one that has caused people to take very seriously that day when they breathe their last breath. How can they know where they will find their soul in eternity? And this is the purpose of the meeting, to let you know what has been made available for you by Jesus Christ. We read in first, and sorry, first Timothy chapter two, and in verse three, the desire of God. It is his wish that all men would be saved and would come to a knowledge of the truth. Sure, somebody must be asking, safe from what? The current virus that seems to be running rampant wherever it wants, doing whatever it wants, being the, the reason why so many people are losing their lives. Is this what we're being saved from? No, it's not. There's something even worse than that. And that is our sin. The Bible instructs us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us that our sin is what will prevent us from getting into heaven if we don't have it forgiven while upon this earth. And what I want to tell you tonight is that there is a man, his name is Jesus, who came on this earth and bore in his body the penalty of every living human being that has ever walked this earth and will ever walk this earth. He has borne the penalty of our sins. And if you place your trust in him, you can be ready from today. You can be ready from now to to be sure of a home in heaven the day you breathe your last breath. We are not asking anybody to sign their name on a dotted line or a church register or to do any kind of penance or to donate any money to any charitable cause. We're just telling you about Jesus Christ and the work that he did or about 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross. The desire of God is that all men would be saved. Sin came into this world by one man. And by one man, sin has passed to all that inhabit this earth. There is not a person that is born without sin. Not one of us are perfect. Not one of us can live one day without doing something that is not godlike. As a result, none of us are fit for heaven. God's wish is that all of us would be fit for heaven. And he's made it simple. The Gospel of John speaks to us about a religious man that comes to Jesus one night. His name is Nicodemus. And he's curious 
about the things and miracles and the deeds and the speech, the way Jesus performs the things he does. And he asked Jesus that night, no man can do the things that you do unless God be with him. And Jesus responds to him in this manner. And I'm paraphrasing here. Nicodemus, there is something more important than you trying to figure out how I'm able to do the things I can do. Unless a man is born again or born from above, he can never see the kingdom of God. And this is what our message is to you tonight. To be aware of the fact that if you die in your sins without asking God's forgiveness and accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will never be in heaven, according to the Bible I hold in my hand. We read that the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from every sin. We can put our faith in Jesus and be ready for eternity from this very hour. I want to take a few moments to tell you how I came to know, one, that I was a sinner, two, to know how I could have my problem of my sin dealt with. And three, to let you know why I am sure I'm going to be in heaven. First of all, I was born in a little island far from Canada. And this island is named Trinidad, where I was part of a major religion, raised to have good morals, to behave myself, and not to bring my parents any shame or trouble. I thought I was a pretty good boy. I thought I lived a life that was good enough that when I became an old man and I died, I had, would have done enough good deeds on the right hands to outweigh any of the bad things I had done. And based upon that principle, I thought I'd be able to get into heaven. But one day a friend at work came and started telling me a little, a few verses from the Bible. And I had made a joke with some of the guys that I worked with. And I noticed he didn't laugh. And I asked him, what's wrong with you? Where's your sense of humor? And he told me, well, I'm a Christian. I can't laugh at a joke like that. And I told him, I am a Christian as much as you. And I don't see anything wrong with a little fun. And believe you me, for the next three years, as we worked together, he tried every which way to make me understand, not so much to convince me, but to make me understand what it means to be a sinner in the sight of God. You see, the way God looks at us and the way we look at ourselves are two completely different things. God's ways are not our ways. And God sees us with love in his heart and going on down a road that is going to lead to eternal punishment. And he doesn't want that for any of us. And I thought, because I didn't kill anybody, and I never robbed a bank. I thought I was a pretty good guy. And I had the last thing in my mind was any concern about where I'll be in eternity. And eventually, uh, my wife got saved before me. And now she started to tell me about salvation. So there was my good buddy at work speaking to me about being born again. And my wife at home, speaking to me about being born again. And I thought, well, <laughs> this is a lot, this is too much. I thought maybe I had done something wrong to anger God and you're punishing me this way. See, I didn't understand that God so loved me that he sent his only begotten son into this world 
So that if I trust in him, if I believed in him, if I believed that if I was the only person on the face of this world, earth, Jesus would have still come, gone to Calvary, and suffered on that cross for my sin, just so that I would not go to hell. And I didn't, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't understand it. I came, we came as a family to live in Canada about three years later. And again, when I had a job and I met a friend there and he started telling me about Jesus again and how I need to be born again. And I could not figure out what is happening. What have I done? Why God is punishing me like this? Everybody who is a good chum or a friend, I can't escape it. Well, I tell you, there's nothing like the word of God to set you straight. And one night, I was dropping a bunch of the, us home, and it was a Sunday night, and the radio was on. And on the radio, two men were discussing a passage of scripture. And they were speaking about Jesus sitting upon a throne. And they were speaking about him opening a couple of books. And he was looking into the books for names. And if and the person that was in front of him at that time, if their name was not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life, they were hurled into the lake of fire. You know, in all my life, I had never, ever heard that. And that's the very, very first time I became worried that it is possible that my sin, even minor, would send me into the lake of fire. And for the next, maybe about a month, I tried to figure out, is this true? Is it just religion? Is this something I have to take seriously? And it wouldn't be until, uh, I would say it was about the Easter weekend of that, uh, of that year, that I decided to go to a Christian conference with my wife and, and children. And I listened to a few messages and I thought about everything all night long. The next morning I woke up and I decided if I continue the way I go, I'm going right now, I'll have no excuse. I knew that I had to meet Jesus when I died. But I didn't know that my sin, even though I didn't consider them big, I didn't know they would take me to hell. And friends, if you were looking on tonight and you're in the same boat that I am in, read Revelation chapter 22, sorry, 21, verse 11. And see for yourself. Take a look at the verses we have read tonight. God's wish is that every man be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. We're not preaching religion tonight. We're not looking for church members. We don't mind if you come, but we're not looking for church members. We are doing what the Lord Jesus has instructed us to do, to tell you that if you die in your sins, just like Nicodemus, where the Lord Jesus is, you cannot go. And our prayer is that you, with the help of the Spirit of God, We'll come to see if you've never chosen him to be your savior. Tonight will be the night when you choose him. Now at this point, uh, my brother in Christ, uh, Stephen, is going to come in and he's going to give his message. And we just pray that whatever I may have missed telling you at this point, the start of the meeting, that he will say something. And if you are without Christ, you will accept him and you will make him your savior and the Lord of your life and you'll be ready for eternity. May God help you.